my family is hostage in Iran. They put my brother in prison. The family members of these activists, Iranians are hostage in Iran. 18 million people are hostage in Iran. We don't bow to the hostage takers. And I want the leaders of democratic countries not by the hostage-taking diplomacy. Good evening, everyone. Um, we've been listening to the Kurdish Women Choir Lazer. Uh, we've been working with them um, uh, with our production of Icicle's play, 
uh, the suppliants, and we love working with them. Um, we're going to listen to them two more times tonight. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> my name is Julia Albrecht. I'm director of the Bali, and I'm tonight incredibly honored to speak with Mazi Alina Jad, uh, who traveled here even though uh, it's very dangerous for her and it's been uh, uh, advised by the um, FBI not to do so. So um, we're very, very happy and lucky that we see her back here at the Bali. Yuri, I have to be honest with you. You were brave enough to actually invite me to come here when my campaign and the campaign of Iranian women against compulsory hijab was not that popular. We were the one actually people labeling us, saying that you're causing Islamophobia. We were the one that people telling us that, you know, we go to your country, we wear hijab out of respect to your culture. And we, the women of Iran, were the one actually frustrating and just being furious, didn't know how to explain to the rest of the world that being oppressed or receiving lashes or being bitten up by morality police, it's not part of our culture. This is the culture of morality police. This is the culture of ISIS. This is the culture of Taliban. This is the culture of Islamic Republic. Our culture is just tolerance. Look back our history, 40 years ago, women had the freedom to choose what they wanted to wear. One of the news agents in America invited me to go there and said, oh, we've just found out on the news that you're being followed by someone who want to kill you. Can you just stay, I have to, you know. And I was like, you have to one cancel the, the terrorists, of, not me. One of the major news yeah. uh, networks in America? AP invited me to do an interview, and then uh, that was the day the news was everywhere, like uh, one of the guys with loaded gun got arrested in front yeah, of the, my there, house. There's this Azeri yeah. criminals in front of your door. He yeah. was a scary as well, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I, I saw his picture, yeah. really. He like, didn't even need the gun to kill me. He could have just, <laughs> you know. The thing is, my message is here. Thank you for not canceling those who are the victim of terrorist government. You have to cancel terrorists and their bodies and their apologies who are here in Netherlands and bypassing the sanctions. No? In the meantime, we have seen an uprising. Um, must have been terrible for you also not to be there and have to watch that from abroad. For all I, of us. I, I imagine. The moment when Mahsa got killed in Kurdistan, Kurds, instead of like mourning, crying, they turned the funeral to a massive protest against the regime, because they were the first group they said no to Khomeini. So they said, Jinjian Azadi, right after that, across Iran, from Kurdistan to Zahedan, everywhere, everywhere, people got united. So now this is time for us outside Iran to be united. Uh, so that is why recently we, some different political leaders, from monarchies to those who believe in a presidential system, left and right, you know, to Kurds or, and, and um, human rights activists, not Nobel Peace Prize winner, the son of the last Shah of Iran. Um, I want to name them all, but we got united. We were just a small group of massive Iranians outside Iran who say no to Islamic Republic uh, and, and uh, trying to say to the democratic countries that we are united, we are ready to have an Iran without Islamic Republic. And you must be ready, you must be united, have a unified voice in Europe, in America, to accept an Iran without Islamic Republic, which benefit Europe and other countries in the West as well. Believe me, we the people of Iran are better allies than these backward mullahs for you and... <laughs> there are women in Iran, Ghazal, Nilufar, Rahele, these women, were shot in their eyes. I have to name men as well. Reza, Hossein, Saman. These people, you see that one, all of them being blinded. But you know what scares the regime? They all show victory. Sarina, Nika. You know, many of these teenagers who got killed, now you see their family members. Many people in, in like Mahsa's family members. They are actually saying that this revolution needs blood, and that's why our beloved ones sacrifice their life. Puya Bakhtiari is another one. He was hand in hand with Nahid Shirpiche, his mother. Both of them joined Iran protests. What happened? Puya got killed, shot in the head in front of his mother. Guess what happened? Now his mother is in prison because 
She said that loudly, I am alive. I am here to bring the Islamic Republic down. This is the true heroes of mine and many Iranians. I wish Western female politicians who go to Iran were as brave as Nahid Shirpisha and Sepida and other women. You know, taking off their hijab and saying that you are terrorists, we're not gonna recognize you, we're not gonna legitimize you. I saw many politicians here in the West, they bowed to Taliban and they covered their hair as well. And don't get me wrong, I don't have any problem with this. My mother wear hijab. My dream is to shoulder, walk shoulder to shoulder with my mother. But this is a symbol when it's in the hand of Taliban and Islamic Republic, the Western female politicians can be our allies and say no to Taliban, no to Islamic Republic, and yes to revolution in Iran. But also politicians say that it's important to, because we have diplomatic ties uh, uh, to uh, uh, tell the Iranian government uh, how things should be. And if you have, don't have uh, uh, diplomatic ties and if you don't go there, you know, nobody will listen to you. I hope you don't believe in that, but thank you for challenging me and giving me the opportunity to actually answer to this argument. You're absolutely right, because I keep hearing that from many politicians, you keep hearing that, that we should not isolate the Islamic Republic yeah. because we have to negotiate with them and solve and, and, and look bigger what problems. And look what happened to North Korea. They're isolated and, you know. Iran is going to be North Korea even having the diplomatic relation with the Islamic Republic. Why? I'm going to tell you. Two decades, the Western government actually spent the resources of the Western people to get a nuclear deal, to negotiate with the Islamic Republic, to keep this diplomatic relation. What have you achieved? What have you achieved? Nothing, because the Islamic Republic is cheating, hiding the nuclear enrichment. Islamic Republic is lying. And Islamic Republic doesn't understand the language of diplomacy. Their language, their diplomacy is hostage taking. Their diplomacy is spreading their ideology here in Netherlands. Believe me, if you want to have an Iran without nuclear bomb, you have to actually respect Iranians' revolution who wants to have an Iran without the Islamic Republic. With the Islamic Republic, it's not gonna happen because, I mean, you were in the meeting with me, with the Prime Minister. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything bad because still I have hope that he's gonna deliver his promise. He was very honest with me in some part that he couldn't promise me, he said I cannot do that, but in some part, especially putting the Revolutionary Guards in the terrorist list, he promised me that he's gonna push the EU to do that. Yes. He did. He did, but he was afraid to speak out too loud uh, because of those hostages. That's right. That's what, that's what exactly President Macron told me, that Prime Minister Rutte actually said that if he uh, is, you know, being tough with the Islamic Republic, they might hurt the, you know, citizens of Europe who are in prison. They, the Islamic Republic might hurt the hostages. My family is hostage in Iran. They put my brother in prison. The family members of these activists, Iranians are hostage in Iran. 18 million people are hostage in Iran. We don't bow to the hostage takers. And I want the leaders of democratic countries not by the hostage taking diplomacy. Because if you actually send monies to them, or you say, okay, because you have hostage and you are using them like bargaining chip, then I'm gonna be easy on you, so they're gonna take more, more hostages. It's gonna send them a signal that we don't do any, we, the Islamic Republic don't receive any punishment, then there is no reason for them to stop taking hostage. So that's my point. There is one solution. U.S. citizen is in prison, U.K. citizen, U.S. citizen, a German citizen, French citizen, all of them are in prison. They're being used like bargaining chip. One solution for that, all the leaders of these countries, they must get united and downgrade their diplomatic relation with the Islamic Republic, recall their ambassadors, kick out the Islamic Republic diplomats, and ask them to release all the innocent political prisoners. This is how diplomacy works. Yeah. Yeah. You spoke to our Prime Minister yesterday, uh, you spoke to our Minister of Justice uh, today, um, you spoken to uh, uh, President Macron uh, uh, last year, at the end of last year. Um, why is it important to speak to Western politicians? Because to... human rights is universal. Look, I remember when, um, because 
This is very, very, very simple. You are not free. None of you are free in Europe when women of Iran and Afghanistan are not free. Yeah, Otherwise, you, you have to face terrorists on your own soil. Believe me. <laughs> and we deserve to have secular democracy and dignity and freedom the way that you take it for granted. Because the color of my skin is different than uh, Western feminists or Western women. That doesn't mean when I get kicked out from a stadium, it's normal. That doesn't mean when I get kicked out and lashes, it's normal. When, oh my God. The Handmaid's Tale. No, no, I have to finish that. I have to finish. There is a series called Handmaid's Tale, Nadime. So you know why? It hurts. It hurts a lot when I see that in the West people eat their popcorns and watch this as an entertainment. Then a white woman get raped, get lashes, get hanged in entertainment movie. Your entertainment is our reality in Iran and Afghanistan. <laughs> My women are getting killed. I will now ask uh, Biri Salmazi and Poyan Tamimi Arab to join me. Thank you, Poyan. Poyan Tamimi Arab, we ask you to uh, put together a, a sort of uh, a presentation on the mood in Iran. And I think that's very important in this conversation, so please. Thank you. For years, statistics, Massey says we're not numbers, but statistics, surveys, have legitimized the Iranian regime. For instance, a 2013 Pew Research Center survey claimed that 83% of Iranians supported Sharia law in the Constitution. A Gallup <coughs> survey conducted after the sham elections of Ebrahim Raisi in 2021 claimed he's astronomically popular. Now, we at Gaman knew that conventional survey modes like on-site interviews and telephone interviews, don't work in Iran. Many people are just too frightened to give their true opinions about such politically sensitive topics. That's why we conduct online surveys, the rationale being that non-representative data can still be attempted to be made representative through waiting, whereas if people don't answer truthfully, Nothing the researcher does can make the results valid. Now, a survey we conducted before the protests in February 2022 showed that Iranians don't agree with a theocratic system. Our survey sample sizes run in the 10,000s, and for this particular survey, we made use of Siphon VPN next to distributing the link on various social media pages and channels. Siphon is a free app that allows people to connect to the unfiltered internet. Millions of people use it. And we found that collaborating with Siphon helps us in getting samples from harder to reach groups, such as women, people in rural areas, and also regime proponents. At the time, Siphon sent the link to 620,000 unique desktop and mobile devices inside Iran. After the waiting, using demographic variables such as age, sex, and the province people live in, we found that around 70% explicitly disagreed with having a political system governed by religious law. Young and old, men and women, people in rural and urban areas, and those with and without a university education. So we also found, this is before the protests, that 65% support nationwide strikes, and that around half the population at the time thought civil disobedience and street protests are a good way to bring about political change. So given the protests in 2017, and then again in 2019, and given such numbers, the outburst of revolutionary sentiments following Gina Amini's death should have surprised precisely nobody. And still, some journalists cast doubt on the nationwide character of the protests. Despite unpredictable internet limitations, we were able, fortunately, to conduct a survey on the protests in the last days of December. The survey link was spread to a variety of apps such as WhatsApp and Instagram. Siphon sent the link to a near 400,000 unique mobile and desktop devices spread across Iran. And this time, 
The satellite television channels Iran International and Voice of America Persian also broadcasted an ad that's showing now on the screen to participate in the survey. Over 157,000 people inside Iran filled out the survey. But I know what you're thinking, right? Yeah, but is it representative? So let's look at three tests to confirm whether it's representative. <clears throat> this table, which is uh, based on official data coming from Iran itself, shows household income levels divided into so-called deciles, dividing the income levels into 10 parts of 10%. In the middle, you can see our representative sample. That's the one that says sample after matching and raking. Now, how do you know it's representative? It has to be 10% for each decile. So you see we have 12, then 8, then 8.8, .8, 7. It's all nearly 10. And the last four are added together at the bottom. That's 40, right? This means two things. It means the data from Iran is actually true. And it means that our survey is capturing people of all socioeconomic layers in that society. We compared our results also with those of Ethnologue. That's an institute based in the United States that has researched which languages people speak in Iran. And you can see that our results closely resemble those of Ethnologue, showing that people of different ethnicities are participating. So, you know, we had 68% for Farsi, for example. It should be 63. Kurdish, we had 6.5, but should be 5.8, and so on and so forth. And there are even some regime-backed polls that we can use. For example, when they're not asking politically sensitive questions. We compared our results on people's health insurance with those of ISPA, which is a regime-backed polling agency in Tehran, and the results are close to those of ISPA. Even, you can see, for example, the armed forces insurance. The regime pollster said it's 3.4, we had 2.9. So even for a very small group that has armed forces insurance, it's there, right? So, I mean, this is, this is amazing, uh, just to be clear. In survey land world, this is, this is crazy. So. The survey results are, in other words, highly reliable. Because people answered questions anonymously, we can be more sure that they gave their true opinions. Yeah? So what are those opinions? We found that in December 2022, 80% explicitly said they do not want an Islamic Republic. If they could vote in a free referendum on the current political system, they would vote no. Comparing three survey results, we found a huge increase, that's the red line you see going up, in the people who completely gave up on the idea that this regime can be reformed, with 60% explicitly agreeing with the idea of regime change, and another 16% agreeing with a transition away from the Islamic Republic. We also found that people are infuriated by the regime's brutal violence. The percentage of those who say they would support revolutionary executions of regime officials doubled to 16% compared to a survey we conducted in 2020. And this anger was the highest amongst people under 30 years old and, unsurprisingly, women. Some academics cite a cooling down of protest activity or insufficiently impactful strikes to claim that Iranians don't believe so to claim something about what they believe, right? to claim that they don't believe a revolution can succeed. In contrast, in survey research conducted after the protests in December 2022, we found that revolutionary anger was mixed with hope, with two out of three expressing the belief that the protests can succeed. No doubt the romanticism of revolutionary sentiments can cloud judgment, but the majority of Iranians inside and outside the country do support reasonable steps to cooperate across political divides. Chants such as woman life liberty originating in the Kurdish population and from Zahedan to Tehran I sacrifice my life for Iran heard in the downtrodden province of Sistan and Baluchistan capture a desire to achieve a democratic Iran that is inclusive. But what can some answers do? from our survey report? 
over 70% agrees with proscribing the IRGC as a terrorist organization. Agrees with expelling Iran's ambassadors. Over 60% agrees with ending negotiations to revive the nuclear deal, while 12% says they have no opinion. 73% thinks the West should seriously pressure the regime. These numbers confirm that in her many speeches and interviews, Masi Ali Nejad is mediating what the majority of Iranians want. They want the West to recognize their revolution, to cut ties with the regime, and to concentrate all efforts on empowering the people. Yes, they say often that Iran is polarized, or at least they used to try to say that, right? You know, the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, Zarif, would say, oh, we have high turnout rates. People participate in elections. 70% turnout rates for Rouhani, right? But what we found in 2019 is that the overwhelming majority who said, I voted for Rouhani, also said that in a f truly free referendum, they would not go for reform. They would just vote the Islamic Republic away. That means that Iran is not a polarized society in that sense, right? We have a very large majority that's kind of the hostage of a, uh, what you call backward, uh, Mullah minority. Thank you. It's phenomenal. I'm drawing, trying to draw too close, but um, if I look at that number, so we see about 15%, maybe one five, uh, of the population being might be in, in favor of a, and the other part of the uh, of the population obviously isn't. So there's a tiny minority ruling, a big majority. So it's it's it is, um, is the main instrument for doing that is that the uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps? Yeah. yeah. They have power, yeah. money. Yeah, because uh, ideologically it, it has crumbled. So what's left is brute force. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we ask the leaders of democratic country to recognize the Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist organization because this is the only way that a, a tiny, tiny uh, group with no legitimacy within the country can rule the majority who want to have dignity, who want to have a normal life. We're going to listen for the last time, for the third time, to uh, the choir, and then we, uh, uh, we can leave. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>